Hello everyone, myself Professor Rekha Singh, Savandirya Institute of Management and Science, HOD, Department of Computer Science. This lecture series is all about the various concepts of Unix shell programming as prescribed described syllabus from Bangalore University for fourth semester BCA. Hence, let's start understanding the 10 concepts of Unix shell programming through this lecture series. Okay, so the chapter is about process management as I discussed. So you will be learning about what is process, parent and child process, process states, how do we create a process, what is the data structure, that is the memory management involved in process, what is context switching, that is how do you switch a process from a user mode to the kernel mode and kernel mode to the user mode, different types of process and what are the process related commands, how do you kill a process and how do you schedule a process. So this uh, particular chapter is more on theoretical and hence um, the maximum questions that you can expect from this is two marks obviously in part A and five marks two questions that is 10 marks so totally 12 marks you can expect so most of the question paper has a process management as a main question hence this is one of the important chapter for your Bangalore University exams. Now let's move on to the topic what is a process so whenever I see a process it is nothing but a task Task is nothing but a command that we give for a operating system to run. So the command we cannot directly write it, but what we do, we, we write a command to a command prompt. So command prompt takes that commands, it analyzes what is the task of that particular command and runs the program. This analysis is nothing but a replication that it, the process is going to do at that particular time. Which process? The process is nothing but the shell what we are using. You all know that in Unix we make use of shell. Whether it is a corn shell or a C shell or a bash shell. So in our curriculum we are learning on a bash shell. So whenever I issue a command let us say ls which is a listing. The bash shell will understand that I am supposed to do a, a listing of the programs. Which is called as an instance of running a program. Hence here. Process is an instance of running a program which consists of all the services. That means what we are supposed to do. Resources, that means where your command is stored so that it is utilized and it gets executed. So for example, as I told you, when I issue a command, it starts a process and runs the command and give us the output. So when it gives the output, every process what you run, there will be a unique ID which is called as a process ID. And this ID is of five digit number. And also at any point of time, this ID will be not duplicated. For example, if I give ls command in my system, say system number A, the process ID, let us say 121. If your friend has given the same command in another system, then the process ID will be different. So don't ever think that the process of the same command will have same ID. It differs from one ID to another ID. But the process of the same system having a repetitive process will have same ID. For example, LS I gave in system A. After some time again if I give LS, the same process ID will be displayed. Hence the process will not be changed at the same time system but the process will be a different from one system to another system. Now each process will also have a parent process which is a, a master or a monitoring process which we call it as a parent ID. So that is the process which been monitored by its supervisor we call it as a parent ID and as already mentioned all these process will be run through a shell command which is a shell process. And the shell process will be maintained by the variables which are available in path and shell. So path and shell are the two major shell variables where path is a variable which stores where is your command is working and shell is a 
variable which show which stores the special variables like ps1 ps2 ps3 which we studied in the previous chapters to hold the process id the special variables what we use is dollar symbol double dollar symbol for example if i give a command echo double dollar then i will get what is my current process that means to run echo what process id i have used so that id i will get so 291 is my process id which i am running currently on the shell prompt okay next what are the different types of process there are four different types of process that we have to understand the first one is foreground process foreground means what in the front in the front in the nothing but a user related command so if a user gives a command and if it is running the user is waiting that command to execute such kind of execution which happens at the front of your screen and which is handled by the user we call it as a foreground process so foreground process you have to wait till the process gets executed so hence it takes lot of time whereas when we go to a background process there are certain commands which do not require user intervention that means you don't require any inputs from the user so those process we call it as a background process a very good example that we know is see now i have kept my system idle now what my system is doing now system cannot be idle now according to the for us it's we are idle but system is not idle what system will be doing is in its background it is going to check the number of spaces that are left to free in its memory which we call it as a garbage collection so the process which runs at the background and do not require any support or any input from the user we call it as a background process same thing for example you want this pw to run at the background not in the front gram so in that case you have to give pw and ampersand where ampersand stands for a background processing that means the pw should work in the background not at the front ground next one is batch processing what is a batch batch is nothing but a set of tasks that you want to do it simultaneously for example let us say i want to display the total number of memories that are available in my system so what i do is first thing is first i will check what is the size of the memory in the current process second thing i will check all the allocated process third thing i will check all the free blocks fourth thing i will calculate the percentage of utilize cpu utilization memory or secondary memory utilization or the archive files so like this i am trying to check the entire memory spaces at once so now this is what it is not one task it is a sequence of tasks so when i do a sequence of tasks and these tasks are stored in a area which we call it as a spooler area so that it is done one by one on a fifo basis that is first in first out basis and then gives you the result so this kind of process we call it as a batch process and these batch process will not gen generally connected to the terminal instead they connected to the area one more example is you are booting see whenever you want to boot your system it is not just to switch on your computer there are so many files that has to run at the background that is it has to check the memory it has to check the input output peripherals it has to check the operating system is mounted so all and it has to check the securities files all these are so many tasks that has to be done so we cannot switch on the computer and give a issue a command but what we do we just plug in or we have to just switch on so that it is automatically runs by itself so how does it automatically runs it will be stored in an area which is called as auto exe dot bat that is automatic execution area so that it is done one after the other and tell that your system environment is ready to use so such kind of process we call it as a batch process next one is demon process what do you mean by a demon process see demon process comes when you want to 
execute your program even after there is a shutdown. So daemon is nothing but process that runs very continuously. So this is a process which is used in the booting process. That is during the system boot we'll use it. Wherein it becomes alive and it, it stay back still the system is shut down. That means it is going to manage the entire operating system environment. For example, so the various tasks of the demand process is scheduler process. That means whenever I issue a 10 commands, so 10 commands do not work one at once. So which command is done first based on the request, it will schedule command number one, command number two, command number three in a sequence order. So this is called as a scheduler process. It, in it, in it is nothing but initializing your program or initializing your operating system as I already discussed during the booting. So that is also a demand process. Virtual memory handler. See, there are certain things wherein you want, uh, you know, your data to be handled by the virtual memory. For example, your cookies are also a virtual type where you don't want every time to go to a main memory, take the data and then process and then coming back, which takes a lot of time. So you want some intermediate results or intermediate commands that has to be stored under a cache or in a virtual memory. So we that process is also called as daemon process. Now BD flush. So BD flush is nothing but whenever you issue a command, your command is by default will be stored in a in a temporary memory, which I already told you, a cache. But this gets, you know, loaded. And uh, if you try to do it, then the same thing is coming. For example, in your website, if you say uh, www.go uh, means everything will come, right? You don't have to write, type the entire thing. So that means the data is already, the, since the frequency of using the same kind of data is already available. And as soon as you type, instead of going to main memory, searching for the URL and then displaying, it directly displays as it is stored in cookies. So similarly, if you want a an intermediate data that has to be displayed every time, then we'll it will be handled by virtual memory. But if you want those things to be erased, then we make use of BD flush. So BD flush is nothing but it flushes all your input and output that has been recently used in a virtual memory. Then Zinted, after a system is booted, then a daemon will sit and wait until the client gives you a program such as FTP client or NIC. So this is a command or a process which connect from one network to another network and or within a uh, network using a common uh, terminology like FTP clients. So all these that LAN uh, terminals. So that means it will find out that all its PIDs and all its TTYs are being stored under a process ID. So that kind of process will be handled by the daemon process. Now, what is your process states? So that means when you want to run a program, sorry, uh, when you want to have your Unix environment process to run, so what are the different stages that it will come across? First one is user running. That is process is in running mode. So when you issue, the user would have given you a command. So that environment, we call it as user running. Second one, kernel running. So process is allocated to kernel and hence it is in kernel mode. That means what? So once a user gives a command, then it will be accepted by the kernel and kernel checks the process and he starts doing. So that is see from user to kernel. Then from kernel to ready, ready to run in memory. That means once a kernel process the process and he will make them the process to be stored in the main memory and it's still not executed but it will be still in the memory and it will be ready for execution. That is the third step. Fourth, asleep in memory. So process is sleeping but resides in main memory. That means one, it is stored in the memory but it is, it is the, still not started is in a running mode. Next, fifth. So fifth is, so once it has gone, so it will come to the swapping. That means once memory is released, then it will start running the program. So process is ready to run 
and it will swap into the main memory so that it allows the kernel to schedule for the execution. Next, sleep swap. So this is a process wherein uh, the process is in the secondary memory and make a space and make the space for execution of other process. So it may resumes only a task is fulfilled. That means once you give a task for a running, then it will wake up and it will perform its task. And once task is completed, it will release that memory. Next, preempted. Preempted means on ongoing process, if uh, while the first process is moving from kernel to user mode, then it will allow a space. So that means it is giving a, a pre what is that, uh, uh, preempts or uh, it will uh, provoke that the process is in a running state and it will be releasing the memory once the process is completed. Then the next one is A, that is created. That means if the enough, uh, it is, suppose if you want to start a new process, then we go for an eighth, which is called as a newly created, but it is not at the running state. So we, it is a next stage where you are going to start the process. And this process will be created using a command called fork. Next, last one is zombie. So this is a very important question, which is even for a two marks. So zombie is nothing but, it's a last stage of your process wherein zombie has completed the execution. That means it has done with all the uh, commands that has been given in the process. Once the execution is done, it, it's statistical data. That means the status of the execution, the process ID and all its related information are still exist in the process table. So this is called as a zombie process. So totally there are nine different stages and this is a very important question in part B. So most of the question paper has this question. Please study this diagram and write accordingly. Okay. So hope I, you have understood. Once the user gives, he, user gives a command, so it will come to the uh, use from user mode to the kernel mode. From kernel mode, it will be ready in the run state. So once it is ready in the run state, then uh, if... Uh, uh, it is still not uploaded in the main memory, then it will be in the sleep state. Then uh, fifth one is uh, once it is get, then it will release the memory. That is, it is swap in and swap out. So uh, that means the main memory will be released. Then for the next execution, once the main memory is released, then it will swap from the sleep mode to the wake mode. Then it will get uh, you know alert or a signal that it has to start execution. So once it get execution, that it, then it will deliver the process, then it releases the memory and it will go for the next stage. That is, it will create the new process. Once the process is created, then it will be going to the last stage that is called a zombie state or a halt state, wherein all its uh, uh, details like process ID, process status and uh, a command and uh, other uh, related process information will be stored in a process table. So this is a the summary of your process states. Then how this process is created. So whenever you want to create a new process, then you can create as an independent process, which is called as a parent process. Or if you want to create process within a process, we call it as a child process. That is a very new or a individual process, we call it as a parent process. For example, BCA is a parent process. Fourth SEM is a child process because 4 SEM BCA comes under BCA. So like that. So we have a parent process and a child process. And these processes are created when you are initializing a process or when you are executing a process. And these are created using a command called FOK. F -O -R -K. So hence the when a independent process, like, like a parent process, which creates an another process that is a child process, we call it as spa spanning. S P A W N I N G. Spawning. Spawn, span. So, so that is how it is being spelled. So that means it is a two marks question. They'll ask what is spawning in a multitasking operating system. When one process creates an another process, it is called spawning. Okay. So, and also this Zumbi process is an important two marks question. 
Now, how does these works? See, for example, let us consider we are creating a process within a process. It's spawning, we are doing it. Now, we issue a fork command. So, parent issues the fork command in, creation, in creating a child process. So, the child is get created. Once child is created, what the parent will do? The parent supplies the resources for the child for its execution. Sometimes child gets the resource directly from operating system or if it does not get, the parent will supply the resources. What are the resources like CPU time, memory files, input output devices, all these things are used for the child process. For example, let us say I have created 10 uh, login IDs. So 10 logins are monitored by one super user. Now that super user is your parent. Then under that super user, the 10 logins which I've created are the childs. Now I will tell 10 childs out of 10, I ask three childs to do a program on GCD. And to, for three people, I tell do the program on factorial. So another four, I'll tell do the program on multiplication. Now, how many uh, tasks I've given? I've given a three tasks for 10 users. Now, these users, when they are doing, they have to make use of uh, files, correct? So they have to make use of all the inbuilt functions and they have to make use of input output devices to do the program or to do the task. So let us say the multiplication program, it seems to be simple, the all four does it. But the parent will not resume for the next task. The parent will wait because the other six people who are doing GCD and factorial, they're taking some time because GCD and factorials has little more, let us say, uh, has a complex uh, programming structure as compared to the multiplication thing. So, so now what that parent does? Parents has to wait till the child gets executed. So that is how that process is created. Now parent creates a process, 10 process, and the childs are executing. So parents wait till childs are executing. Once it is wait, once the child finished, the child executes, then the parent resumes again and it will yield create the next set of process. So this is how the process execution happens. So hence, in summary or in nutshell, what we can tell is a process when we are creating it performs majorly three different operations. One is forking, the other one is overlaying and execution, and the third one is waiting. When I say forking, forking is nothing but a process which is created because of because an existing process creates an exact copy of itself. That is, fork is a command which used to create a child process. When we are creating a child process, it will create the process with the same set of characteristics, uh, that is, we call it as an environment, as that of parent. So this procedure is called as forking. So when you see this uh, C command, when I say PID is equal to fork, that means when you're creating for very first time, then you're creating fork command for parent. Again, if you want to create for a child, then it is executed twice. So if one fork is for parent, one fork is for child. So the second thing is, as I told, once a child process is created, the child has to make use of environment variables and its arguments for the execution. So he will run the program and he will try to complete his task. So when, when he completes his task, so this process, we call it as execution. This is a stage wherein child process will perform the task assigned by the parent. So and the parent has to wait till the child is executing. Hence, it is a execution process and parent is waiting for the status sent will be sent by the child that it is completed and success are unsuccessful. Once it is successful, that is all the child parents of the parent of the parent process are done, then the child get exited means to say that the process is complete. So wait the variance allow wait on a specific child or notify for stops or other signals. Suppose if there is an, any error or anything, then the child says that he wants to exit from the process or he want to terminate. So all these status will be signaled through a signal command and later it will be exited. So this is the process that is 
working that means creating a process executing the process parent is waiting the process and child is exiting from the process now all this process when we are doing so we need some memory right so we have to store this process in one or the other way so how does the kernel manages its uh, memory management so the kernel manages this data in three different tables one is a process table where it is going to store all the process related information such as storage execution status file information etc the second one is a file table it is a table where all the file entries are made that is file attributes file name file size file description file number everything will be maintained in the file table and last is v node and i node as we know that process has the i node which is the i node table which maintains all the process related details these i node references will directing it is something like your a uh, directive table which directs your storage system and mechanism which directly connects your hardware and software details so this is how the kernel or the shell will maintain the uh, data structure or maintains the memory management during the process state next see when the kernel is doing even the user has to give an instruction when user is going the kernel has to process so it is a a switch over between a kernel and a user in a different modes so hence we call it as context switching so context switching is a process where a computer will be if suppose if it is executing in a user mode then if he wants to go to a kernel mode and do some other process so the process of switching from one state to another state we call it as context switching hence the context switching has two major mode one is kernel mode and user mode what is kernel mode kernel mode is nothing but your main shell mode where you have to perform all the instruction that are available for hardware where in user mode you don't have to do it you just take whichever is required so hence it is a subset of instruction then kernel has to process all your memory variables memory management and memory related a uh, task whereas user he has to refer only the space that is allocated to him the kernel has a critical part of execution and it it has to ensure a correct execution to get the right output whereas in a user mode application pro, uh, programs like whatever we write a program only that is accountability for the user mode whereas in the kernel mode uh, instruction runs very fast yes it has to run because whenever you are running a program given by the user the first thing is it has to check for its data structure second thing it has to check for its memory management third it has to bring the instruction set and analyze that and gives you the output so hence the the speed of the kernel mode should be comparatively fast as compared to the user and kernel requires lot of effort and overheads in the performance whereas user do not so user have a limited effort so kernel can easily implement and it can be trapped mechanism because all the instructions are been controlled by the kernel whereas user do not have such control but it has a limited effort so hence all your input outputs uh, instructions that you give are managed by the kernel whereas you are request or a uh, your commands which you give will be given through the user mode which we call it as an application program now what are some of the commands that we can use using a process at the command prompt so one major uh, question is on ps command so ps is nothing but a process command which is used to display the attributes of the process that means it will tell what are your process mainly it will give you information about your process id your terminal id time taken what command you have used along with that you also have the other features like how much cpu has how much memory to how much virtual memory size what is your uh, resource logins uh, your status when you have started who all your what are your user names or your login names everything will be given by the process for example when i say ps ux ux is a user so under this ux what all the users that are running this process gets listed 
Suppose you know the particular process, then you can give PID. So PID is your process ID number. For example, PS1268 if you give, where 1268 is your process ID, then you will get information only about that. That is your PID, what is your terminal name, when it is started, the time and the command. So all these, one, two, three, four. So everything gets displayed here. Okay. So along with that, we can also use many options like minus F where it, you will get even your parent PID minus C along with the process uh, users list. You also get the system processing list. Then uh, minus U, you will get only user process list if you want or minus A. All the process of all the users but do not display the system process. Then that is system process means predefined process. Then minus T means process running on a particular terminal. So you suppose say I'm the server and I want to manage, uh, I am managing around 100 terminals, but I want the uh, data only of 15 terminals, then I can give only that 15 terminals ID, then I'll get only the terminals in each, like I did here, PSP ID. Okay. Now the next command is no hub. No hub is nothing but no hanging up. See, sometimes what happens is I will be doing some operations and I'll give some command, but uh, immediately I don't log out. Uh, I just come out uh, just like that. And uh, I don't know that the command is executed or not. Now, if you want your command to be executed, even after you have logged out, then you have to give no up. So no up is nothing but no hanging up. That means whenever that means uh, when you prefix the command, so whenever you are trying to give a command, if you prefix with no hub, that means this command will execute even after you logged out. See, I have given an example here. The sort command will sort the file of emp.ls. This is not a uh, source and destination. This is destination comma source. That is your source file is emp.lst. So it will sort emp.lst and store the sorted value in emp.sort.lst as a background process. As I already told you, ampersand stands for a background process even after the students have, I'm sorry, when the uh, user has logged out. So that means, so this process is being executed at the back end even after logged out. Okay, that is called no hub. Then what is a top command? See, top command, the word says top. That is all top priorities information. That is all major inf information like when the when the user is uh, when is his up time that is when is his login time when is his log out time what is the load average time he has taken how many processes are running how many processes are in sleeping mode how many processes are in the end state mode that is a zobi mode what is the percentage in terms of cpu utilization in terms of memory swapping in terms of total free memory in terms of buffers cache every information this is something like an admin who is keeping track of your memory management we make use of top command so when i use a top command along with that we will get information about all the process id all the users processor terminals virtual terminals then the shared memory cpu utilization memory utilization time and what all the commands that i've used everything get displayed so top command displays the information about all the running process on your operating system Unix. Okay. Next, nice command. See, nice command is nothing but suppose if you have given around 20 to 25 commands and your command is on 18th position. I don't want that. I have to wait for 1 to 17 the process to complete. I want it to be something I wanted to give a priority to it. So now to assign a priority to my command so that that command, even though after executing first command, if my 18th command, if I give priority as two, then immediately jumps to the 18th command and runs the program. So that means called niceness. That means if you are, you are going to set the priority to the highest level, which has a poor performances, then we call it as a nice command. For example, nice minus N19 band C is one of the command which are a program which you want to learn. So not what you are doing, you are setting a priority that it has to go to the last one and do the execution. Or you can give it as one, that means it comes as the first priority and run the program. So, so to prioritize your task, then we make use of nice command. Next, time command. 
See, time command runs the specified program command, which is going to give an argument. For example, when I say time and date, so it is going to give you your system time and the date. So when I say system time, it will be, it is divided into three different aspects. One is a real time. Real time is nothing but the time you have given your command or a process to execute and time it has been executed. So the difference between start process and end process is called real time. User time. So the time taken by the user to execute the program and the time taken by the process to execute that particular program, we call it as a user time. Then system time, time taken by the kernel to analyze your process and execute as per the user requirement is called as a system time. So one is start pro end process minus start process is real time. Time taken for the program to execute itself is a user time. Time taken by the kernel to execute that particular program is system time. Okay. Next one is kill command. See, sometimes you don't want that process to run. You want to kill the process. So you can kill the process by giving a process ID number. For example, kill and 105. That means you're going to kill the process ID number 105. Now if I give kill dollar exclamatory mark, that means it is going to kill the process ID whose background process dollar is uh, saved in the system vari variable as dollar asterisk so that the PID of the last background job is created. So it is one last process, whatever it has given, that background process if you want to kill. Because dollar, you know that stands for a background. So hence it gets deleted. So if you remember, I have told you echo dollar dollar. So where dollar dollar will give you the process ID. So last but one, that gets deleted. Now if you want to delete the process based on your signal, so then we have to give signal number and the process ID. Then what is this signal? Signal is nothing but an identification. For example, you have a traffic signal. When you get red color, it's nothing but stop. So it will indicate something, right? So if you want to indicate, then you have to give a signal. So there are so many signals. That is, there are 32 signals in the Unix, but the major signals with their integer numbers have a symbolic number is these are the major signals. So you have a signal number one means you hangs up. That means you are still in a sign mode. Even though you come out, the process will not be terminated. Signal 2 is nothing but your process will be terminated very immediately. Signal 9 means it is must and should that you have to kill the process. You cannot ignore it. So that means that is called, it means you cannot put them into hang mode. Then say 15, signal 15 is that was signal term. That means you have to as a software to terminate the current process. So it is a software termination signal. That means you are going to remove the entire package itself or entire software files itself. So that is called a sick term. Then sick child, that is 18, is nothing but change in the child process status. Like that you have so many signals, that is 32 signals that are available. So these are the major one with the symbolic name. So this is also a question asked for what is signaling and what are the major. So you have to write this as well as the table. And even the kill command is a two marks question. So it is a, a terminating command. So you are going to delete the process that is called kill command. Now, the important uh, command is at command. So at command means, see, suppose I want to, today what I want, I want your uh, all your uh, files to be displayed in your Google class and I don't want to do it early in the morning setting and doing. What I do in previous night only, I will set up all the tasks that I want to do and I'll schedule the time and I'll say, okay, and I'll sleep off. So tomorrow morning, automatically when the timer gets uh, activated, the process gets executed. So that means what? You're going to set the timer for which process has to run at what period of time. That is at a later date. So that can be done through an at command. And these at command cannot be done by all the users. It can be done only by the system administrator. Again, at command can be done only when the administrator has a privilege of at allo, at allo. So that means if he has an at allo permission, only then that, that file gets uh, uh, you know executed at that particular time. Otherwise, if the file is set to at deny, that means you're restricting, you cannot do that process. So for example, let us say dollar at 17.30 redirect to program1.sh. This means 
0.30 means 12 plus 5, that is uh, 17, that is 5.30 p.m. today. The script file, what is your file name? Program 1.h will be executed. That means you are telling that this program should execute at this point, point of time. So that means you are going to schedule when it has to do it. Or suppose if I give at now plus 10 minutes, that means now you take a current time after 10 minutes you have to execute so you can use this so you can also make use of the keywords like this see now noon midnight today tomorrow so like this you can make use of any number of keywords in executing the at command at command also has many options like minus f that is which file that you want to run minus m that means you can send a mail along with that because you know that there is a communication a command called a mail command so where you can use it in minus l list the command that has been set to run then minus r cancel the command that you have set in the past so these are the add command then batch command so what is the patch command patch command execute the specified job when the load is relatively low that means if you want to do a set of process that time you make use of batch command so batch command executes your job when the process is when the set of process from the operating system is relative that means since it cannot execute only one command it has to execute set so this will execute as a set example batch sort emp dot that redirect that is a pipe filter command grep for bangalore and direct to add dot output what does it mean? It will take a file emp.dat. It sorts the file. Grep Bangalore means it search for a string called Bangalore. And whatever output you get, that you will save it in add.out. So this is done. This command is executed when, not as soon as you do it, but it will execute whenever the operating system do not uh, get more request to process that means the request level of the operating system is low that time the operating system is comparatively free so that time it will execute this batch command okay now the last topic of this chapter is cron daemon this is also a five marks question so cron daemon is nothing but it is a periodic command scheduler it is also something like your time command where you are going to schedule that when the program or when you when your task has to be run at a certain time and date so this is driven by a table called cron table where the cron table has a six fields like minute so the minute ranges from 0 to 59 hour 0 to 23 hours then day of the month 1 to 31 month of the year 1 to 12 day of the week and which file you want to run an example, see I have given here 001511 sort employee.lst. So this is nothing but at the 0th minute, 0th hour, okay, first to 215th of each month, 1 that is on Monday, 0 means Sunday, 1 means Monday, I need to execute the file, that is I need to sort the file emp employee.lst. That means, see, as soon as the employee starts, you know, updating the data at a dynamic, you want it to be sorted accordingly. So instead of going and sorting every 15 days, what I'll do, I'll issue this command. So that this command will execute on the 0th minute, 0th hour means on midnight, every first day of the month and every 15th that is in the middle of the 15th of the month on monday it will execute this program so this is how you can manage see all these are administrative work hence um, unix is a very powerful uh, program because we have lot of administrative and security measure commands where we can control without the intervention of the user